Hello everyone and welcome back to Around the World in 80 Planes. For this flight I'm going from Baghdad to Kuwait City in a Sakata TB30 Epsilon, a French trainer plane. And I'm sort of sideways a little bit. Definitely tilted, the, the runway seems a bit tilted. I don't know exactly what's going on, but this doesn't seem like the most stable runway. We'll see though, I mean, hopefully I can get off the ground quickly enough, but this is the plane. It is a freeware plane. And you can see just one of those propeller trainers doesn't go particularly fast. Uh, it might take more than an hour to get to Kuwait City from here, probably. And we are continuing with the Apollo 12 audio, picking up where we left off. And here we go. Roger. Okay. So... Whoa. Well, I don't think the runway is going to cause us any problems. And it changes color. When you get on the surface, it's interesting down here in that place. But uh, it's not too much unlike uh, just being out in a big uh, field of pumps on Earth. You have to have a great around it. What's that, that building over there? It's not that much uh, different than uh, on Earth. Not the right place. With the F5, I was going rather fast. I didn't get a good chance to look around. Hmm. I don't know if that building's supposed to look like that. The Apollo 12 audio seems a bit loud. That seems like a more European style thing. I get the feeling that that's probably supposed to be a different kind of building. Okay, well, we're currently pointed north. Let's go the other way, actually. You mentioned that backside looks uh, different. Is it just a different... Uh, it's probably meant to be some sort of... Density or entirely, uh, different, I don't uh, know. To it. Palace or something in a lake like that. Looks like they were nature to me. As with most trainer craft, this is fairly nimble. J F F FPS is now. I updated X Vision. It might have disabled that other plugin. I'll have to fix that. X Vision is a sort of environmental plugin that I use. Makes subtle changes. I mean, basically, we can follow the rivers down, but oh, we could follow this road. I think there is a relatively side. continuous highway. Uh, 
uh, uh, I just kind of occupied watching the descent of cockpit there. And when we pitched over, and I first looked, I had a foggiest idea where I was, and then all of a sudden, the old pattern was sitting right there. Well, just like the cape, huh? Well, just about, I did a little LP. Yeah, just, just like it, and, and I did just a little LPD, and mainly to, uh, was to believe it to get out of the crater, not to get to it, because uh, it looked like we were going to land right smack in the it. We've got a Fido down here telling me about a prediction of six yeah. feet. Uh, just to be clear, Apollo 12 is still doing observations of the moon. They have not departed lunar orbit yet. Uh, looks like um, this area here is called Mamudia. As if a lot of places looking a bit dusty. Sandy, I guess. Roger, I'll say you're a bit broken up. Uh, Some good solid farmland you, around here, though. Central station down there. The power is good, and uh, you got a good signal. Average temperature now is about 72 degrees, and it's slowly increasing about 0.6 degrees per hour. The, the biggest thing that happened recently was the impact of the ascent stage, and the PSE picked that up uh, very well. They consider that one of the most significant things that's uh, happened to date on lun lunar seismology. The LSM uh, is working real well. They just did a flip cal on it. Well, they did the flip cal before ascent, and they also noted at ascent that the magnetic field blanked out at ignition and lasted uh, the blank out lasted. The to reflections minutes, uh, on the bonnet are a little bit weird. The solar wind I don't know if I get to call that a bonnet, but that's what I'm long. thinking it, of it as. The uh, psi also picked up some uh, counts in the uh, high energy range of the detectors at ascent. And they also think they have a probable pickup. Don't know what that symbol itself. on the tail is supposed to represent. However, the uh, hmm. side is still uh, continues to short out occasionally, and they think it's just uh, degassing. So now they have the high voltage off, and it'll probably bring it back on around lunar noon. Other than that, it looks as though it's really perking right along. You did a slow job. Hey, I had uh, what, uh, what's the best estimate now? Oh, uh, we're getting a little fast okay, here. Okay, from what we can see down here, there's no observable effect. Uh, that, that, that be very Max speed uh, for this, well, the never exceed uh, speed for this is 281 knots, so. Yeah, there you go. 
uh, 300 horsepower engine. And the max takeoff weight is a mere 1.25 tons. The engine in this is a basically a modified version of the same one in the Cessna 182. And numerous other planes, like homing O360. It's actually, I mean, that's the one in the Cessna. Uh, this one is technically a Lycoming AEI 540. Sorry, it's just the. Uh, 0540, not the 0360. Uh, well, it depends on which Cessna 182 we're talking about. Some of them are continental 0470s. Well, I think you guys were the prime movers from the beginning, and the hitches that did come up, uh, you sure knew how to work around them. Well done. Anybody can swing the hammer. <laughs> the hammer. 12 Houston, we're standing by with a map update for uh, Rev 41, TE iPad, Rev 43, and some times for high resolution photos, Descartes and Frau Marl. For those who listen to the Apollo 11 audio, it's very apparent that they had a lot more time to do stuff around the moon than that earlier mission. And of course, two EVAs on the surface. But this whole observation thing. One six two, three eight. Is three eight. much longer. One six two, five niner, four niner. TEI pad, rev forty three. SPS GNN, three four two three five. Minus. Overall, zero, the first four, mission was eight plus, days. Uh, zero, this one four, ten days. One, so six, basically eight, two extra days two, eight, around the moon. Five two, seven two. Now an 81, plus 29er447, plus 02719er, minus 00790. NA, pitch is 126, and NA. Four jets, 11 seconds. Read back. Oh, it sure looks good with uh, clouds involved. Let's get this in a good angle. Everything looks better with clouds involved. That's Charlie. And we've got uh, times for... We have your times for high resolution photos on. Descar and Frau Marl, when you're ready. Go ahead, ready to copy. Okay, Descartes, T1, 163, 29 T2, 163-33-12. Roll, pitch, and yaw. You can use the attitudes in the flight plan. Fra Marl, T1, 163-4001. T2, 163-4401. And again, uh, roll, pitch, yaw. Angles are the same as in the flight plan. Roger it. Copy one six three two nine one two one six three 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 one two for Fa Marl one six three four zero zero one one six three four four zero one and the RPY is in the flight plan. That's 
truck. Pete, Houston. Go ahead. Just saying, looking over the transcripts of the EVA, uh, you'll figure as you saw some pretty interesting stuff down there. Uh, matter of fact, he figures about 11 times. Say again, you were a bit broken. I see you learn how to be a test pilot by not committing yourself. It's called lethal learning. Guilt by association. Ah, uh, jokes. looking at chunks of the real bedrock. Yeah, and from here Suddenly fluffy clouds. You made that uh, comment also on the surface about some of those which are pure white. Do you think that was just the sun angle, or do you think that's the real color? Well, I don't know. I guess uh, we're about uh, high noon now. We're about high noon now. Saying any and, uh, aileron trim seems excessive, but it does seem to want to drift right. But if I try and do a little bit of left aileron trim, it starts to drift left. The flight plan has the times in uh, ground last time as well as um, Houston time, so. Okay, you're clear, but there's an awful lot of static. We'll be picking up a little better comp fairly shortly. And it's got everything hour by hour. I think that's uh, a good deal. I'd rather be up when you're up than uh, be watching you sleep during the day. Oh, I guess he repeated that. I was wondering if uh, there was a new tape or not. Paul White has become a sleep expert. <laughs> sleep expert, meaning he's always on watch while they sleep, so. Paul Weitz, I think, uh, later goes up on Skylab. I don't think he goes up on any Apollo mission. Roger. 
Okay. Yeah, he goes on Skylab 2 and STS-6. About the, uh, having that hot engine and, uh, looking at the return. Uh, if we did it the way you suggested, we'd be... Ah, uh, wait a second, Ed. Okay. Okay, Ed, go ahead. Sorry, we were trying to, uh, Al and I were trying to pick up the snowman from, uh, here. Did you get him? The snowman is that crater formation yeah, know, near the landing site. Okay, on the question you brought up before, it looks as though your uh, delta V capability would be around 20 feet per second uh, margin, and that looks a little bit small. Okay, no problem. Well, we weren't sweating it. We just uh, knew that if we uh, had uh, a better engine or something, there was a chance we might have enough to do it. No problem at all. One That's right, I think you probably got a little better play the place to spend it there. That's right, Dale. I bet you there's lots of guys sitting over in the LRL who wouldn't mind trading you a day or two. Houston, we suggest a zero degrees on the shaft. Okay. I think we're actually following the canal here rather than the Tigris River. Apollo the canal is relatively Houston. straight. The Tigris is very windy at this point. Uh, to our right is Highway 1, which Triangle. basically goes north-south okay, through so the country. A little bit out of configuration here and we're squared away now. Uh, did you call? No, There's a lot of canals going on here. Plenty of I irrigation. I wanted to ask about some gyro torquing angles, but uh, uh, we had gotten a P-50 done, two done early the last time. I'll right past them to you. Okay. Oh, uh, the Tigris is to our Houston, left. You can continue I with the one to our right. DSE dump. You can continue on to the Dakar attitude. Okay. Twelve, Houston. Go ahead, Ed. Say, Dick, in order to, uh, Help Fido out a little bit. Would you try to do uh, the dumps on the back side where possible? Sure thing. I just couldn't wait any longer. <laughs> We'd like to see the back side of the moon. Say that again? After watching you on the front side, we'd like to see what the back side looks like. Uh, okay. Uh, the, the, these are waste disposal jokes, for those who don't get that. Fido, of course, uh, the flight Apollo dynamics officer, Houston, who needs to plot their trip back. Order switches in the forward position. Roger, in the forward. The waste dumps do change their trajectory just a little bit, so I guess he wanted to even that out. You want it off, Houston. Houston Apollo 12, did you want us to put that switch in forward where it is now, or put it back to off? Stand by. Well, it looks like the clouds are clearing up up ahead. Al, what we want is the tape record switch to forward, if it's not there already. 
Apollo 12, one minute to LOS. This is Apollo Control. We had uh, loss of signal as Apollo 12 went behind the moon on the 40th, near the end of the 40th revolution. Have some 45 minutes, 35 seconds until acquisition again. And at 162 hours, 14 minutes, ground elapsed time, this is Apollo Control. This is Apollo Control Houston at 162 hours, 59 minutes, now to the flight of Apollo 12. Apollo 12 uh, will come within acquisition range uh, in less than a minute. In Mission Control Center, meanwhile, uh, we've had a, a shift turnover. Uh, Flight Director uh, Pete Frank uh, presently aboard. And uh, Capsule Communicator Jerry Carr has replaced uh, Ed Gibson. Well, we've console. so far seen quite a lot of farmland. We'll Initially we'll closer to Baghdad, it seemed like it was just uh, watered normally, but uh, in other words, uh, not quite uh, with this extensive listening. irrigation network, but here, obviously, a lot more canals and such going on. And looking up ahead, I think uh, we're about to see the end of the farmland. This is You're already Roger, pretty Houston, uh, bad off from the look of it. Roger, Pete, loud and clear. It doesn't doing, seem like Roger? it's functional feeling? farmland at all. That's a strange look. Houston, if one of you can find a pencil, I got a uh, Rev 42. Map yeah, I don't know it. what's going on with this landscape, to be honest. That, that looks awful strange. That, uh, it was good to have a chance to take a, an overview. And then this of is long look at the moon from a bit of a distance. Like, uh, We're at, uh different world. Hours, two minutes, presently into the flight. But I guess deserts often look like that. You know, they often think of uh, training for Mars missions in deserts. But this is, uh, this is pretty serious looking. Oh, okay, here, I don't know what to make of this landscape okay, right map now. update for Rev 4-2. LOS is one six four one two zero five. We're about halfway there. One six four three seven zero niner. One six four five eight two six over. Okay, well, a little bit more sunlight changes the complexion of this. Now it's looking more like a pro proper desert. I've been looking at the map to see what's going on around here. But I guess it's just, uh... It's just your normal desert. Apollo 12 now on its, uh, looking quite strange sometimes. Uh, presently show an altitude of uh, 58.3 nautical miles above the surface of the moon. It's, uh, current orbit, uh, 64.6 nautical miles by 56.4 nautical miles. Apollo 12, Houston. 
Roger, if you give us accept, we'll start uh, an uplink of your CSF Oh, I, get, I think we can see the bit. Tigris over there to the right there. Oh, wait. No, that's probably the Euphrates. Tigris is to our left. Oh, okay. My mistake. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 163 hours, uh, 20 minutes uh, down to the flight. Yeah, that's the Euphrates. And uh, this thin band you the see there is Highway Apollo 1. 12 crew, uh, no doubt involved in preparations uh, for tracking and photographing potential future landing sites. With little blocks Pete on either Island, side uh, for some reason. Control Center Houston uh, Flight Director uh, Pete Frank. Confirms Seems like somebody had some plans. We do not plan uh, uh, for an early return, a one-day early return uh, for the uh, Apollo 12 crew. We're at uh, 63 hours, 21 minutes into the flight. This is Apollo Control, Houston. Yeah, might as well keep them in orbit. They're doing a good job. This is Apollo Control, Houston, at uh, 100. Early return. Hours, uh, 40 minutes uh, into the flight. We've had uh, no conversation with the crew. The uh, guidance and uh, control officer and mission control center uh, has just confirmed to flight director Pete Frank that uh, Apollo 12 is in attitude uh, for uh, the uh, tracking and photography of Frau Morrow, one of the uh, candidates landing sites uh, for subsequent Apollo missions. Yeah, I have no idea what these little diamond shapes next to the road are supposed to be for. We presently show uh, Apollo 12 uh, in an orbit uh, of 64.6 .6 nautical miles by uh, 56.3 nautical miles. Its velocity, or the spacecraft velocity, now reads uh, 5,357. And whatever they are, they've been sort of disrupted by the landscape quite a lot. This is Apollo Control, Houston. And they end up ahead. That is, uh, that is an interesting thing. I mean, it's just one of those things you don't see. <laughs> I don't... I guess they are alternate roads, but then they've been sort of wrecked. Show, Pete. Uh, you can uh, terminate the charge on battery alpha and start but then on why the chance you get. sideways bits. And if you're ready to copy, we can get these uh, tracking pads out of the way that are on your page 3-145, and that'll take care of the paperwork for a little while. That is a peculiarity, all right. Yeah, bad charge, Pete. It's work, and I'm ready to copy. Okay, Pete, we've got four of them. First one is uh, Charlie Papa 1. T1 is 1, 6. Frank, Frank, uh, would you hold it just a few minutes? Okay. Uh, we want to take a look at Copernicus. Uh, Observations come first. Okay. They are busy sciencing. Again, I've cut out many minutes of silences here and there. So there was obviously a much longer break there. We seem to have descended somehow. I didn't change the elevator trim. Yes, there's just sort of a different atmosphere around here. Delta Echo One is the next one. One six five two four two one. One six five two niner one seven. And it's on track. Foxtrot mic one is one six five three five zero eight. 
1-6-5-4-0-0-6. North, 0 9 -er. Over. There's some crazy business around here. I don't see, you know, like, oil facilities necessarily. We're ga getting down to that region of Iraq, that's for sure. But there, there has been business going on around here, with, judging from the lines and everything. Not totally clear exactly what. Looks like I don't have uh, photo scenery over to the right there, so I'll stay this to the left. Code, Houston, uh, 163 hours, uh, Greener pastures is off to the left, it seems. Those, uh, pads, uh, I guess that's pads, closer uh, to Tigris I River. We're decidedly... We're pads, well, I was about to say decidedly in between them, but I think this is the Euphrates right here. CP2. Uh, CP it's coming around uh, here. We're at uh, 163 hours. And yep. This is the Euphrates River. Altitude of 60.1 nautical miles. And this is Apollo Control, Houston. Uh, Apollo 12, Houston, uh, go low bit rate on PCM. I guess you got a pretty cool foot down here by now, I hear you. That's affirmative. The Tigris and Euphrates sort of join up. Euphrates turns. Almost completely full, and it's beautiful. And we're nearly there where it turns flat east. And Tigris is Houston, heading Houston, south. They meet up uh, some bit north of Basra. Lots of lakes around there. Roger, Pete. Uh, Houston down here is enjoying a good cold You can see some of the lakes up ahead. So the moon is particularly beautiful. We'll head towards uh, the general region where they meet up I think but it's a little bit out, out of our way uh, this city here I believe is Nazaria Apollo Control Houston at uh, 164 hours 9 minutes now on the flight uh, we're less than You can certainly see why they would build a city here we'll but with the CF Euphrates River nice canals going around lots of lakes up ahead seems like a good place for a city But, yeah, I'm going to depart from the Euphrates. And on your wastewater dump on Lots the side, of canals. Over. Roger, see you at 58. We'll dump to 15. The long feet. Apollo Control, Houston, uh, we've had loss of signal with the Apollo 12 command module as it passes above the uh, far side of the moon. We uh, reacquire Apollo 12 at uh, 164 hours at 58 minutes uh, into the flight.
This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 164 hours uh, 58 minutes now to the flight. We're some uh, 20 seconds away now from acquisition and standing by. It's Apollo Control Houston. Uh, we've had uh, no contact yet with the crew, although we are receiving data. Presently, uh, we show uh, the onboard computer in program 22. This is the orbital navigation program. We'll stand by now for any conversation uh, as it may develop. Sort of wonder where these canals go. I swear, it looks like the canals like go under each other even. Three minutes into the flight, we presently show an apple Complicated business. Of all the water in this sort of area, they're bringing it somewhere. Apollo 12's current weight in orbit, uh, 34,000. I don't know if these would technically be aqueducts. I can't see on the map. Standing by and continuing to monitor. Uh, this is Apollo Control, Houston. Apollo Control, Houston. Apollo 12 uh, performing a... Uh, we're performing several... Uh, landmark tracking exercises as we pick them up this rev uh, a report from uh, the guidance and control officer over the loop uh, indicates that uh, 12 has completed its uh, first landmark tracking tracking exercise we're at uh, 165 hours five minutes now into the flight and this is apollo control houston Apollo Control Houston, uh, 165 hours, uh, 12 minutes into the flight. Capcom uh, Jerry Carr has not yet tried to call Apollo 12. The uh, crew of Apollo 12 uh, still actively engaged in uh, their landmark tracking project. So we'll stand by and continue to monitor, and we're at 165 hours, 12 minutes now into the mission. Apollo 12, Houston, do you read? Okay, just check it. The map sort of make these look more swampy than lakey. You can see the green in them. We're still sort of following Highway 1, that's to our, our right there. Uh, 
One thing I noticed is that the highways tend to be very wavy. You can see how I want, I mean, it'd be trivial for them to make the highway straight here. But I think the reason why it's wavy like that is to avoid monotony or mirages and such. If you see it on the map, it's decidedly just wiggling around subtly. And I think that's why, but I'm not sure. That's just a hypothesis. Okay, Rev but it's unmistakable. Rev Apollo Control Houston at uh, 165 hours, 19 minutes into the flight. That uh, TEI 43 pad, uh, which was passed up by Jerry Carr to uh, Al B, is uh, a maneuver pad which is stored inside the computer uh, only to be utilized in the, the event uh, a requirement existed to return Apollo 12 uh, back toward the Earth on the 43rd revolution. It's a uh, contingency pad only, uh, block data. We're at uh, 165 hours, 20 minutes into the flight and continuing to monitor. This is Apollo Control Houston. Oh, we've got some uh, gridding over here as well. 
next to what I guess is a fairly straight road compared to the highway to the right. And interesting two, two, blocky patches next four, to that six, uh, canal like thing. One, six, seven, two, seven, four, three. North. Very zero, interesting. Two. Foxtrot mic one. One, six, seven, three, three, zero. Correction, three, two. Yeah. One, There's six, some of the seven, more diamond shaped ones three, next to eight, Highway 1 there. Three, two, and north, uh, I, I see one, things two, that I suspect north. are oil fields. Oil facilities. Lots of stuff going on there. Still very interesting that uh, I don't know what half of the stuff I see on the ground is for. <laughs> Even though quite a lot of it seems to be human constructed, of course. But some of this is obvious oil stuff. We can see some, some facilities out here. We're approaching Basra. Yeah, I don't even know how you get that kind of scarring on the landscape right there. This looks like oil country to me. Apollo Control Houston at 165 hours, 33 minutes now to the flight. We presently show Apollo 12 at an altitude of 57 nautical miles. And in an orbit uh, showing an apolloon of 64.6 nautical miles and a paraloon of 56 nautical miles. We have uh, some 37 minutes remaining on this front side pass. Apollo 12 is now in its uh, 42nd revolution around the moon. We're at 165 hours, uh, 34 minutes, and continuing to monitor. This is Apollo Control, Houston. Apollo 12. Go ahead, 12. Perfect. Uh, you're working using the same plan or the one just calculated? Dick, use the ones in the flight plan, not the non-89s. Okay, thank you. That's uh, Command Module Pilot Dick Gordon talking with uh, Capsule Communicator Jerry Carr planning his... Uh, Interesting. Uh, uh, on the map, I think it says that this is pump station one. <laughs> and I sort of believe it. I sort of believe it. Uh, I guess it corresponds to that raised platform there. Pump station one. Okay. Okay. Uh, Dick, while I have you, uh, 
So here we have a junction between uh, Highway 1 and Highway 31. Highway 31 goes off to the left, uh, to the east, and that goes to Basra. I'm not headed towards Basra right now because that's out of our way. But that's a city you can sort of see out there. We're going to continue following Highway 1 to the south and right up to the border with Kuwait. At which point uh, we cross over to a different highway which crosses the border. Oh, oh it's getting to be nighttime. Well, uh, hope it won't take too long. Kuwait's not far and not very large either, so we should land in daylight still. But the highway lights are on. There's sort of a patch of photo scenery to the left that is obviously taken a different season that shows the farmland a little bit greener. Uh, most of this farmland is obviously taken during the off season. So I suppose uh, spring, summer ish, it'll look more like that. That lake right there uh, outlets to the Persian Gulf. There's a lot of stuff just south of Basra that's basically sort of a delta for the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. Any party messages from Capcom, Jerry Carr, prior to. The Iranian border is not too far away from here either. It's, it's actually all sort of smushed together uh, within few miles maybe. Uh, let me see if I can draw a distance here on the map. Roger, we show you a minute and a half from LOS and we'll be picking you up at 16656. And uh, would you pass the word to Dick that... Well, uh, okay, about 30 miles between the Iranian border and the Kuwaiti border around here and then that that 30 miles is Iraq in between the two. So, pretty tight pinch. Uh, Roger, uh, how much is the bet? Okay, uh, so I think seconds. here we have to turn right and uh, not follow uh, Highway 1 anymore. Roger. See you on the other side. Okay. 
you can see this town here uh, that's Safwan and you can sort of see a line that represents the border Go 12. just south of Safwan Safwan is the border town and there's actually uh, multiple lines you can see across the landscape. Not so much to our left, but definitely to our right. You can see those lines that represent the border between Iraq and Kuwait. And that right there, I suppose, is the border crossing. This, this whole area here quite have the opportunity to respond to that last comment from Dick Gordon since Apollo 12 passed over the hill and out of range uh, with the mission control center here in and we are we're at uh, 100 now in Kuwait hours 11 minutes and uh, we'll see uh, Apollo 12 some 45 minutes later as it's presently on its 42nd revolution. This is Apollo Control Houston. And to the left is the northern end of the Persian Gulf. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 166 hours. 57 minutes uh, now into the flight. We're just a little more than uh, 10 seconds away from time of acquisition on the Apollo 12 command module and we'll stand by. Uh, Apollo 12, Houston, Audi Reed. I think they like the name Yankee Clipper, so Yankee Clipper even though it's all right to refer to them as Apollo 12, they do continue to use that. I don't know whether they actually did wipe out the film magazine. Let's hope not. You know, expose it, I suppose. Yeah, at least they still have some time to get more photos. This is Apollo Control Houston. Uh, you heard that report from uh, Pete Conrad uh, stating that they were taking uh, target of opportunity photographs and uh, knocked a 500 millimeter magazine off the camera. Uh, the, the request he has in with Mission Control Center now is to uh, substitute additional target of opportunity photography for uh, landmark tracking on this revolution. Uh, we'll stand by uh, for that decision. Yankee Clipper, Houston. Roger, we concur with your plan, Pete, and uh, we're hustling right now to get you some new T1, T2 times for Descartes and Bromaro.
can't really hear this explanation. You can see the highway right here is doing the same wiggly thing that we saw on Highway 1 in Iraq. So again, I think yeah, there's uh, probably a good reason for this. Either something to do with mirages or just the weariness of staring down a straight highway. Especially through a desert. Okay, for Descartes. Tango one is one six seven two six zero five. But those are Tango only my ideas. Six, seven, three, zero, zero, we can sort of see uh, Kuwait City up ahead to our left. Tango one is one six seven three six. Uh, especially that glittery five, bit. Eight. We have to turn left, Tango but uh, one, six, seven, I'll follow the four, coast zero, here. Five, eight, and we'll have your attitudes for you in a few minutes. Okay, and don't forget to uh, work up that same data for Le Mans and the Rev4 DEI there. Roger. We'll do it. Okay. This is Apollo Control, Houston. Uh, you heard that last exchange uh, between Jerry Carr and uh, Keith Conrad. Oh, we can Apollo actually 12. see the airport already. The uh, landmark tracking uh, for That's this revolution. That's an excessively uh, bright airport right now, land, but and, uh, those were, uh, I appreciate that. Those were times passed up for T1 and T2 on uh, Frau Morrow and Descartes. Uh, to uh, prominent candidates uh, as landing sites uh, for future Apollo missions. We're at uh, 167 hours, uh, 11 minutes uh, now into the flight, and this is Apollo Control, Houston. Yankee Clipper, Houston, uh, while you're waiting, I have a Rev 44 map update. Roger, uh, LOS, 1680905, over. I've got to figure out what this complex to our left is, but uh, I can't see on the map. Roger for Descartes. Roll one. This city here is Al Jara, and there is somewhere in the mix there a red palace. Two, five, two, 
point zero. Yaw, two point zero. Clipper Houston, I did not read your readback. Uh, you were broken. Oh, the little cars on the highway are making me happy. Just from a visual aspect, I mean, of course. Wait, international. Roger, copy. The time was one six four zero six three three, and your torquing angles were plus point zero nine five minus point eight zero eight eight minus point zero zero three. A lot of sparkliness at uh, the area downtown uh, Kuwait Cooper City, but I don't see the buildings yet. Did not do a P-52 at uh, about 165.50, over. I'm starting to see some buildings. Boy, it took a while to pop up. Uh, Roger, Dick. Uh, judging from the results on all the P-22s you've been sending down, buddy, you're the expert. Well, I guess while I'm here, I'll swing by. We'll sort of make a loop.
Mesa Apollo Control Houston at uh, 167 hours 30 minutes. Uh, the reference to the box all taped up, uh, no doubt uh, referred to the camera on uh, previous uh, photography, taking target of opportunity uh, photographs. The uh, 500 uh, millimeter magazine uh, was knocked off the camera. As you had heard earlier, the Apollo 12 crew is repeating photography of uh, future potential landing sites. These being Fra Mauro, uh, Descartes, and La Land, uh, which will come at a later pass. We're at uh, 167 okay. hours. Uh, so downtown minutes, Kuwait uh, City. I'm going to go into the cockpit control. now, and we're going to turn towards the airport. Clipper Houston, uh, how do you read now? Roger, we're reading you weak but clear now. Uh, we're on backup equipment at Honeysuckle. Oh, okay. Loud and clear now, Pete. I still feel like I'm sort of tilted a little bit to the right. I thought that was just the runway, but apparently it's my camera inside the cockpit right now. Don't know what to make of that. Apollo Control Houston, uh, we're at 167 hours, uh, 46 minutes into the flight. We presently show Apollo 12 uh, with an apolloon of 65 nautical miles and a paraloon of 55.7 nautical miles. 12's uh, present altitude, 60 nautical miles. Uh, now traveling uh, at a speed of uh, 5,347 uh, feet per second. We're standing by for any further conversational exchanges between uh, capsule communicator Jerry Carr and Apollo 12. Yankee Clipper, Houston. Roger, Pete, uh, we've had a meeting of the minds here, and uh, the tentative plan right now is uh, to drop the stereo photos, uh, stereo strip work on Rev 44 because it has a lower priority than the landmark tracking. And uh, so we want to be prepared for landmark tracking on the next Rev. Uh, we'll have pad data available for you by AOS, and uh, what we're going to have to do now is I'll link you a new state vector and uh, have you do a P-52 on this pass, over. Okay, wait. Oh, that was definitely an end of tape thing. This is Apollo Control Houston at 168 hours, uh, 55 minutes now on the flight. We're less than uh, 30 seconds away at this time from uh, reacquiring Apollo 12. So we'll stand by and listen. We're receiving data at this time from the spacecraft. Uh, Jerry Carr, our capsule communicator, has not yet attempted to contact the crew. Hello, Houston. Uh, Clipper, ready to copy uh, DE-1 and MM-1. Hello, Clipper. This is Houston. Uh, Roger. P-22 tracking update. Your target is Delta Echo-1. T1 is 169er 2110 169er 2604 North 05 The lat long and altitude are unchanged from your last pad the second target. Oh, nice looking airport, well, at least I can see a terminal. Half of the time, there doesn't seem to be a proper terminal around, but there's definitely something there this time. Thank you. 
Steve uh, Pete, and I've got your uh, Rev 45 update if you're ready. Go ahead. Okay, Rev 45 map update. One seven zero zero seven one nine er. One seven zero three two two five. One seven zero. He's like, we got the hotels three, near the airport too. Four zero. Over. Roger, copy one seven zero zero seven one nine one seven zero three two two five one seven zero five three four zero. Uh, affirmative, and I've got a TEI forty five preliminary for you. Okay, wait one. Okay, that's a maneuver pad, Pete. Yeah, I'll have a pistol to it up. Okay, go ahead. Roger, preliminary, TEI 45, SPS, GNF. Now 47, 3. Four, one, six, three. Minus oh, zero, it actually has reverse four. thrust on the propeller. Plus Interesting. Zero, two, four. Okay, taxi, taxi, go ahead. One, seven, two. Two, seven. Well, I can't really see where four, the six, next taxi one, way in, uh, over there. So we have arrived in Kuwait City. Next flight will be to Dubai, of course, and that will be in a Gulfstream G4. Well, this this taxiway doesn't seem to be going my way, it's uh, the opposite direction. I think I'm going to have a lot of taxiing to do. All right. Well, even though we're in the midst of them reading up numbers, I'll uh, pause that. And I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this flight. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.